In question three, here's what they're saying. The rear side of a truck is open and a box of mass 20 kg is placed on the truck four meters away from the opening. If the truck starts from rest with an acceleration of two meters per second squared on a straight road, find the distance the truck will travel when the box will fall off the rear, given that mu is this one. For you to answer this question, what you have to understand is this. If you have, if you were in a car and the car just starts to accelerate, what? Your body will experience the same acceleration as the car, but the acceleration will just be backward. This is the reason why if a car was to start accelerating forward, it tends to lean backwards. Now, what makes you to accelerate with the car then? What makes you to keep moving with the car? Well, it's the grip between you and the car, between you and where you're sitting. If the grip was very, very strong, you see that when the car starts moving, you easily move it. But if you had, let's say, a box in a van, like the way this one is being uh, shown here, when the truck starts to accelerate forward, what will happen is that uh, this is the forward direction. When the car starts to accelerate forward with an acceleration A, the box in the van will experience the same acceleration, but it will be a backward acceleration, trying to keep the object from moving and leaving it in that same position. Okay, so basically that is what is happening there. Because of that, if we know the acceleration of the van or the truck altogether, that will be the same as the backward acceleration of the box as it is trying to fall from the van. So first, we need to determine how fast the car or the truck was accelerating. And the best part is that acceleration is given. The question says, if the truck starts to accelerate, at two meters per second squared. This is the acceleration of the van. So when this truck is accelerating forward, we see that the box will start to accelerate backwards with the same acceleration. So what do they want us to find? They say find the distance the truck will cover by the time the box is falling off. So first, let's find how long it takes the box to fall off. Okay, so what are they giving us? They've given us the length the box has to move. So the length the box has to move before it falls off. This length is four meters. What else? The length, the mass of the box is given as 20 kgs. Yeah. And what else are we seeing here? If the truck starts from rest, so the truck starting from rest, accelerates at that, find the distance the truck will travel before the box was off. Okay, let's get this. Okay, so Let's start with the box. The box is here. And let's assume the truck is accelerating forward or in one direction. As the truck accelerates in one direction, what we expect is that there'll be friction gripping this object downwards. So force friction will be holding it backward. So uh, yeah, this is the backwards, uh, not necessarily like this. To make you guys understand exactly the direction of the forces, you, you have to know what I explained earlier. If the truck is going in this direction, track with some acceleration, then what we see is that the object will be moving back with, and the force that will be causing it to move up will be given by this, where this A here is the acceleration of the track. 
So I can actually even tell you what this is. Since the box has a mass 20, acceleration is given as two. So this will be a force that will be holding the box backwards, taking it towards the part where it is falling. But the question says friction is present here. Friction is present. If friction is present, then friction will be gripping the box to the track, preventing or hindering the box from actually sliding freely. So friction will have to point backwards. If friction was not present, the question would have been easy to approach. Would have just used the acceleration here, two meters per second squared, and determine how long it takes the box to slide through four meters, and would have been easy, would have been able to find the question easily. But because friction is present, we will not to say friction will affect the acceleration the box will have in the end. If we summed forces here, we see that the box will slide towards the end of the van by with a force of 20 kgs multiplying the acceleration of that van. Then less this by friction of force. This is what will actually give the box that acceleration going away from the van, as in falling off the van. Friction of force, we can, what we're trying to find here is what the acceleration, the actual acceleration of the box of the van, what is it going to be? This is just 40 here, then minus the force of friction being equals to 20. But what is force of friction? Force of friction is equal to the coefficient multiplying the normal force. The box that is just on level surface. The weight goes down, the weight of the box, and the normal force goes up. We see that the normal force in the end will just be equal to mg. So that force of friction will be the coefficient multiplying mg. Now, what is the coefficient in this case? I get what the coefficient is. So the question did give us what the coefficient was. That was 0 0.15. So let's use that 0 0.15. So what we're having here is 0 0.15 by the mass of the box, 20 by 9.8. What are we getting here? That's 0 0.15 by 20 by 9.8. We get 29.4. This becomes the force of friction. So you can then get this and bring it here. And what are we going to get if we do that? So we'll bring this one here. So where there's force of friction, we'll put 29.4 equals to 20A, so that A will be equals to 40 minus 29.4 divided by 20. And if we did this, we get, that's divided by 20, we get, 0 0.53 meters per second squared. So this is the acceleration that the box will actually be accelerating with of the van. So using this, we can now find how long it took the box to follow. We have the distance the box has to fall through. The box also starts from rest. We now know the acceleration of the box of the van. What we want to find is how long it takes to follow. Since the box starts from rest, it has to move four meters before it falls off. The acceleration of the box we have just found is to be 0.53. We can easily get how long it takes to fall off. So we're going to have four. The initial becomes it's zero there and can hold them zero. So this will be half the acceleration 0 0.5, 0 0.53, then t squared. So that this becomes eight is equals to 0 0.53 squared. Divide both sides by 0 0.5. T will be equals to the square root of 8 over 0 0.5. So let's see what we get here. That will be 8 divided by our answer there. Then the square root of the answer. This is 3.88. Five seconds. So this is how long it takes the box 
to actually follow. Now we go to the track. The question was asking us to say, how far does the track go before the box falls off? We now know the box takes this long to fall off. If the track now starts from rest, and don't forget, the track had an acceleration of two meters per second squared. That 0 0.5 was the acceleration of the box because it was affected by friction. For the track, this is the acceleration. And the distance is what we are looking for, given that it has been moving for the same time, the same duration that the box was falling off, which is 3.885 seconds. So you can use the same expression. S is equal to UT plus half a T squared. You just have to keep in mind that the track is going in this direction. The box was falling off in this direction. But I keep taking these as positive values because I am literally just focusing on one, on one case. But you could have easily chosen the acceleration of the box to be negative or positive. If you choose the acceleration of the box to be positive, then everything for the box, for the track, might have to be negative. But here, I am doing this so that I just get the distance, not the displacement of the track. So the initial velocity of the track is zero. The acceleration of the track is two and the track has to move for a time period of 3.885 then square this. So we can easily get how far the track would have gone, which is the 0.88 squared, then by two, yeah, this just comes to be 15. So this becomes 15.1 meters. So we can even say 15.1 meters to the left. Yeah, 15 meters to the left. That is if we want to keep the directions as they were given. Is this the same as the answer they wanted? What is that? Yeah, their answer was 15.2 meters. We have 15.1 meters, so we are okay there. Okay, so any questions there?